Hey Church, welcome to today's online message from Hillside. As you are aware, the Hillside team have been sharing messages with you over the last couple of weeks, and that continues again this morning. Uh, You've already heard from Tobin Hopper, our Young Adults Coordinator, and Callum McEwen last week, uh, our Genesis intern. And this morning you'll be hearing from Stacey Coward, our Children's Coordinator, with a great word on responsibility. We pray that it's an absolute blessing to you and your homes. Um, We hope that it also provides the start point for conversations uh, within your families, friendship groups, and your connect groups. If you're watching the message prior to Sunday morning, Just wanted to let you know that the doors are open and church is on from 9.30 in the Hillside Auditorium. We'll have all the praise, all the worship, and I've got a message for you. So um, if you're watching prior to Sunday morning, come on down. We'd love to see you. And um, I'll hand over to Stace. God bless you. Have a great weekend. We'll see you soon. Hi everyone, thank you so much for tuning in today. If you don't know me, my name's Stacey and I work for the church, running the Kids Church. Um, And it's such a privilege to be able to bring the Word of God to you today. I'm just going to quickly say a prayer before I start into my message. Father God, thank you that you want to speak to us today. I pray that you would guide my words, guide my heart and help me to only speak the words that you want me to speak, Father God. I pray that your Holy Spirit would be with us as we hear from you and that you would speak directly to our hearts. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So the title of my message today is, Who's Responsible for This? And you're going to hear the word responsible quite a lot. So just uh, set that aside in your brain. So, you know, it's in our human nature, isn't it? To try and avoid blame and to try and pin the blame onto other people when things go wrong. Um, If we look back to the very beginning of the Bible in Genesis uh, chapter 3 uh, the story of the fall of man and we know this story most of us have heard it before the the serpent comes and offers Eve the fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and she thinks it looks great so she eats it then she gets Adam to have some and then they're suddenly aware that they're naked and they go and hide because they're ashamed and the bit that I want to focus on is what happens next God comes into the garden to walk with them in the cool of the evening that's what the Bible says happened every night and he found them and they said they were ashamed and God says well, what's going on here what's going on and Adam immediately without even thinking goes it was that woman you put here with me it was her fault she made me eat the fruit and Eve without you know without hesitating just goes no it was the snake it was the snake's fault he's the one that made me do it so I mean that's a paraphrase obviously the bible doesn't say it exactly like that (laughs) but you can read it for yourself in Genesis 3 and the point is that they were immediately as soon as they were found out in doing the wrong thing and things had gone wrong they were looking for someone else to blame And human nature has not changed. This has been a really strange and sort of sometimes disturbing and confusing year, hasn't it? And whenever things go wrong, we always as humans want to blame the government. We want to blame the media. We want to blame people older than us. We want to blame people younger than us. We want to blame our parents or our upbringing or our circumstances or our finances or our spouse. Or sometimes we want to blame the church leadership. Obviously, no one in this church would do that, but... (laughs) But, you know, we we love to do it, don't we? We love to blame somebody. We want to find out who's responsible for this. Who can I pin the blame on? But you know who we're really, really not very good at blaming is ourselves. We're not very good at taking responsibility ourselves because we like to think that it's always someone else's fault. So... I feel that God is challenging me and challenging us as the members of his church um, about some areas that he would like us to step up and take more responsibility in. Uh, The first one, first and foremost, God wants us to take responsibility for our walk with him and for our intimacy with him. So make no mistake, everything else that I'm going to talk about today has to flow from this intimate relationship with Jesus it must it has to be the place that we start and having that intimacy and that closeness with Jesus and with God it has to be the center and the source of everything else that we do it's the it's the most primary important thing that we could ever focus our attention on so what does John 15 4 say it says remain in me and I will remain in you for a branch cannot produce fruit if it is severed from the vine and you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me so what does that look like 
Okay, there's a few things that I think within that heading of responsibility for our walk with God, there's a few things that I think we need to be responsible for. The first one is we're responsible for what we put into our brain. And I know that you've had, we've all had some recent teaching recently from Philippians 4, 8, which talks about this. And it says, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. This is important scripture, okay? So it's saying you have got the choice of what to put into your brain. That's what it's saying. There's also plenty of scriptures that talk about, you know, taking every thought captive um, and about turning your eyes, fixing your eyes on the things above and not on earthly things. So there's a real sense that God says to us that we are responsible for what we put into our own brains. Now, under that heading, I would also say that we're also responsible for if we're seeking out teaching, and particularly at this time where people are sort of finding a lot of online teaching from Christian leaders um, and finding things to, you know, to sort of um, encourage themselves with and things like that there's a real sense that I will some for some people it feels like well if a Christian said it or someone whose name I know said it then it probably must be true but you know we are responsible for checking those things we're responsible for listening to what people are saying and not in a critical spirit but being critical in our thinking about that and going does that line up with what I know God is telling me does that line up with what I know the Bible says is it biblical is it scriptural is is God is the Holy Spirit giving me a check in my spirit about what that person's just said you know we need to take responsibility for this and I know that Pastor Kerry and Pastor Craig and all the the people who are preaching to you guys I know that they listen to God I know that they are you know believing that what they're saying is what God wants to say I know that their hearts are in the right place but that doesn't absolve us of responsibility as listeners for taking that away and thinking about it and allowing God to speak to our hearts through that it's important okay um, and please don't hear this as a criticism of the church but it's it's about us being personally responsible for that it, this is a really important thing we need to learn and again we're responsible so that we're responsible for what we put into our mind the other thing we're responsible for is how we spend our time you know it's easy to blame a busy life we're all busy I'm busy you're busy you know people who've got elderly parents to care for people who've got small kids people who've got really full-on careers We've all got busy lives, okay? And I'm guilty of this as anything, of saying I'm too busy to spend time with God. Now, okay, do I say those words? Maybe not, but my attitude shows that that's what I think. So it's easy to blame a busy life, but it's my responsibility to make time to spend with God, isn't it? I can't blame my busy life when I still manage to find time to do other things within that busy life. So it's my responsibility to spend my time in a way that is constructive to building my faith and my walk with God. So, you know, I need to find time to listen to God. I need to find time to meditate on the scriptures and pray and intercede for my family and friends. I need to find time to just be in God's presence. You know, and I need to be responsible for what I'm choosing to do in that time as well and making sure that's productive time and making sure that's... And sometimes productive doesn't mean doing, but actually just being in God's presence, allowing him to speak giving him space to speak to us. I'm responsible for that. So my walk with God can't grow unless I have that. And if I'm not doing that, then I can't blame anybody else but myself. Yeah. So, and the third thing under that sort of heading of responsibility for our own walk with God, the third thing is that we're responsible for owning our mistakes and our sin and repenting of it. Um, This is a really tough one. But if we allow sin to come between us and God and build up, then it does block that line of communication. And we can't have that clean, clear line of communication that we want to have with God. And so it's my responsibility to search my heart and to allow his Holy Spirit to bring conviction if he needs to and to be willing to repent of those things and put them right. Those, you know, those things are within my remit. They're nothing nothing to do with anyone else. I can't blame somebody else if I refuse to take responsibility for my own sin. That's entirely up to me. So um, those are the, the first sort of thing that I want to look at was about that, was about having that responsibility for our own walk with God. But that last point about sin and about, um, you know, things like that, that sort of leads me into my second area that I want to talk about in terms of responsibility. And that is that I feel God wants us to take responsibility for our, our relationship with other people. So our relationship with him, number one, our relationship with other people. So... <clears throat> 
this is a tough one as well, isn't it? Um, I've got kids, obviously. Um, my two girls sometimes, they get along really well a lot of the time, but sometimes they have these horrific fights and, you know, I'll get called into referee and normally it's just this storm of recriminations. She did this, well, yeah, but she did that. She called me an idiot. She hit me. She kicked me. Yeah, but she took my thing, you know, back and forth, back and forth. And I've realised recently that the best way, quite recently actually, that the best way to deal with this is for me to separate them and to say you go and think about what you did and you think about what you did and then I'll go and ask them what did you do and usually the usual pattern is that they'll say well I did call her an idiot but she and I'll say no I don't want to hear what she did I want to hear what you did because it's easy to list off all the transgressions of the person next to you but it's actually quite hard to focus on what you did wrong and so this has become um, quite a good tool. I think I'm having mixed success at the moment um, because they're children and they're still learning and it's a tough one. But I think encouraging them to sit and take ownership of the things that they did wrong is really, really helpful. Um, and so and within our own lives as adults, I think that's a really important thing to take stock of, even if someone has done something utterly, utterly disgraceful to you there is a point where we have to sit and think okay is there anything that I could have done differently is there any way that I could have dealt with that situation differently now maybe there wasn't and I'm not going to suggest in any way that if you've been abused or traumatized by somebody that that's somehow your fault but one of the things that God's had to teach me and continues to have to teach me is that I cannot control what other people do I can't control how they treat me how they think about me how they talk about me or talk to me but I can control how I respond in that situation. That's the thing I have control over. And this is a really, really important lesson. And what does the Bible say about it? Well, Matthew 7, 5, we know the scripture. It says, first take the log out of your own eye, then you can see how to take the speck out of your friend's eye. So when there's conflict in a relationship, it's really easy to see the other person's faults. Um, but God is telling us very clearly, take responsibility for your own actions in that. So does that mean if someone's hurt me and done the wrong thing to me that I am responsible for that? Absolutely not. They're responsible for that. But I cannot use what they did wrong as a justification or an excuse for me to do the wrong thing. That's what it means. It means being led by the spirit and not led by the flesh because the flesh wants revenge. The flesh wants to, you know, to just get back at them and to eye for an eye and all of that stuff. But the spirit, the spirit needs to lead us in how we deal with those conflicts and in those relationships. So again, we can't control what other people do, but we can control ourselves. We can take responsibility and ownership for our own actions and our own words in those situations. Now, sometimes taking responsibility in our relationships means that we need to have some tough conversations. We need to be willing to speak up because actually sometimes the flesh wants us to be quiet and not rock the boat and not cause an argument and not, you know, but sometimes the spirit's leading us to speak the truth. But, you know, speaking the truth in love is often the key to unlocking conflict. So again, we need to be able to take responsibility. And sometimes it's a case of going and apologizing, just being the first to apologize, even if you feel like you did very little wrong. Even if you feel like you did a tiny, tiny bit wrong, you still did that bit wrong. So go and apologize for that bit. And sometimes that's just the key that unlocks that conflict because you were willing to take responsibility for mending that relationship. Sometimes it's actually about having taking responsibility for asking for help. If you are um, having trouble in a marriage relationship or a family relationship, it might be accepting, I can't fix this on my own. I need to be the one that's going to reach out and ask someone else for help, whether it's counselling or prayer or whatever it is. Um, but it's just taking ownership of it and being willing to be the one who sticks your head up and says, all right, I will be responsible for doing what I can to mend this relationship. Of course, on the understanding that you can't go all the way, that that has to be, you know, some, the person on the other side has to come with you on that. But you can do all you can. And I think that's the important thing is that if we're sitting around waiting for them to fix it, then we're refusing to own our part of that conflict. And so, um, yeah, I think there's a lot more we could say about that, but I'm going to leave that there. So the first point we talked about was taking responsibility for this relationship, our relationship with Jesus, 
and taking ownership of that and being thoughtful and responsible in that. And the second is our relationship with others, with our family and friends, the people around us. And the last point that I want to touch on um, is responsibility as a member of the wider society. Now, the Bible is absolutely filled with scriptures about being a great responsible member of a community. And I really struggled, in fact, with how to sort of focus this part of the talk because I just there were so many scriptures that I could have used. And then I felt like God was saying salt and light. And so I looked up the scripture. We all know it's in Matthew 5 and it's verses 13 to 16. And it says, you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It's no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men so that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Church, you and I have a responsibility in this world to be salt and light. You and I. Just like salt is a preservative, we are called to prevent decay in our society. That's what our calling is. And I'm not talking about the church as a huge, I'm talking about you and I'm talking about me. This is a challenge to me. And particularly in this very isolationist sort of time where we're all sort of separate and looking after our own families, it's very easy to just become insular and inward looking. But this call remains the same. We are called to be salt. We are called to preserve society and stop it from going bad. That's what salt means. We're called to be light. We're called to bring hope to a dark world, the hope of salvation to a dark world. This is what we are called to do, and that calling has not changed. It's the same as it always has been. It's not good enough for us to sit around feeling self-satisfied and thinking, well, we're all right. I'm waiting for someone else to speak up against injustice or waiting for someone else to speak out against the lies of the enemy. It's not good enough for us to sit around feeling self-satisfied and waiting for other people to go and take the gospel to people who need to hear it. That's not good enough. We are responsible. You and I are responsible for being salt and light in the world. It's our responsibility. And I'll say this as an aside. If we're going to talk about getting involved in, um, you know, justice and controversial issues of the day and speaking out against the decay of society, which I do believe we are called to do, we are also responsible for making sure that our opinions about those controversial topics are first and foremost informed by our walk with Jesus, that we're led by the spirit and not by the flesh. And secondly, that they're well informed. I think this is really, really important to remember. We are responsible for making sure that our opinions, our opinions come under this, the subjugation of God's will. We can't just make up things that sound good because, oh, you know, well, God's love and whatever. We have to make sure that our opinions and our thoughts are first and foremost subject to God and to what he says. But, you know, again, we go back to that relationship, that intimacy with God. If we have that going on, then we can be led by the spirit in those things and we can speak the truth with love and compassion. But it's the truth. It's not watered down. It's the truth. So I think we need to make sure we're being responsible in terms of the way that we share our thoughts about those difficult and controversial issues as well. So how we walk this out practically is obviously going to be different for everyone. I'm not in any way suggesting that every single Christian is responsible for being active in fixing every single wrong in the world. That's, of course, not um, how it works. We're not all called to go to every country in the world and share the gospel. That's that's why we're part of a body. That's why different people have different callings. Um, but each part of the body has to function in its own particular function it can't just sort of you know if you're a hand you can't leave the being a hand to the foot because the foot's got its own job to do so you better be a good hand right (laughs) um so i think that this is you know obviously it's going to look different for everyone but the point is that we have to be open to opportunities to bring to bring preservation 
which is the salt, and to bring hope, which is the light, into the world around us. And the only way that we'll be open to those opportunities is by first accepting that it is actually our responsibility. As members of God's body, of Jesus's body on earth, we are responsible for bringing salt and light. I can't say that any more clearly. And it's something that God's really been speaking to me about. So how it looks, again, like I said, how it looks is going to be different for you than it is for me. And how it looks for you today is going to be different from how it looks in five years or how it did look 20 years ago or whatever, you know, however that works out because you have different seasons in your life. But the point is to accept that responsibility and to say, God, even if I'm only capable right now of just sharing the gospel with the other school mums, or of just praying for, you know, those elderly people that I mix with at work, or whatever it is, whatever that is, it's that taking responsibility, and it's being aware of the opportunities that will then present themselves to you. So I don't want anyone to feel like there's this huge weight of burden of responsibility. But at the same time, we should feel some burden of responsibility, because it's what we're called to do, right? But what does Jesus say? My burden is light. So when we keep that relationship with him, he will give us the strength. He will give us the opportunities. He'll give us the words. He'll give us the right things to do because we'll be being led by the spirit. So I guess that's all I wanted to talk about today. Responsibility in our walk with him first and foremost. Just have that intimacy with Jesus and be responsible for growing that responsibility in our relationships with others and responsibility as members of a society in a world that is full of darkness and pain and suffering and hurt and just needs Jesus more than ever. So um, I'd like to close in prayer. I hope that you've been challenged even a little bit as much as I've been challenged over this word. And um, let's just close in prayer. Father God, thank you for speaking to us. Thank you for encouraging us. Thank you for challenging us. We pray, Father, that we would be intimate with you, that we would allow time for you to speak to us, that you would allow, allow time for you to guide us and show us the areas that we need to lift our game. Um, Father, we don't want to carry a heavy burden of doing deeds, but Father, we just want to be led by your spirit in everything that we do. So we pray that you would help us to um, not shirk the responsibility that you've given us, but to be led at all times by your will. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks, guys. See ya.